Hello, everybody. Uh, I am here today with John Loomer, who is one of the foremost experts on all things relating to Facebook. And today we are going to talk a little bit about the most common mistakes people make when getting into Facebook advertising. How you doing today, John? I am doing great. Thanks, Dave. It's great to hear. Um, I uh, Before we get into all that, I, I would like to kind of give the listeners uh, a bit of a background on how you got started, maybe tell your story and um, and then what got you into Facebook advertising, and um, we'll uh, go on to uh, some more details after that. All right, so I have a long story, so I'll try to do the speed dating version mm-hmm. um, as quickly as possible. So so my history is that, you know, I was never classically trained in marketing. Um, I ended up in kind of marketing things. Like I, I worked for the National Basketball Association, oversaw uh, fantasy games for them, which ended, ended up being all kinds of stuff, which was awesome. That's actually my first exposure to Facebook was back then, 2007. Um, and I believe the NBA was laid off twice um, mm. after that, and you know during bad times in the economy and, and whatnot. But basically, I was at a point where I didn't want to, you know, move my family again. We kept moving. I didn't want to commute. Uh, you know, one of my motivations was, you know, our oldest son is a cancer survivor, so I wanted to see my kids grow up. I wanted to. Didn't want to travel a lot. I wanted to coach my kids' baseball team. They're a big baseball family. So I just – I didn't know how to start a business, and I just created a site. And I just started writing and writing and writing and made a lot of mistakes along the way. And you literally and, uh, knew nothing about Facebook before you got into it. Oh, I knew about Facebook. I knew nothing about starting a business. Okay. So so my exposure to Facebook goes back to, again, with, when I was at the NBA in 2007. We partnered with Facebook. This was – before you could actually create your own app. We we mm-hmm. worked with Facebook to create an app for us. I was the first admin of a Facebook group for the NBA before there were pages. And mm-hmm. so that was my first exposure to Facebook and Facebook for business. Mm-hmm. And But I just fell in love with the platform. So that's what I was most uh, comfortable with, which mm-hmm. is why when I started writing, um, I wrote, you know, in the very beginning I wrote about everything, but a lot of Facebook-related stuff. And eventually I found my way just focusing more and more on Facebook and then Facebook for business and Facebook advertising. Mm-hmm. Well, there's, there's definitely a lot to, to dig into. I mean, we're, we're constantly learning something new almost, <laughs> almost every day. You know, it, it, yeah. it's overwhelming. And uh, that's why it's great to have people like you to kind of sift through what's most important and to kind of really dig into to the details that are really going to move the needle for you. And, uh, you know, we personally learned a ton from you starting – um, meeting you at the CM World last year, where you gave that awesome presentation, and oh man, I just I just took that thing. We watched it, <laughs> printed everything out, and we just went down line by line by line. And man, oh, like, awesome. my world opened up. I'm like, oh my god, I did not realize you could do all of these things with Facebook. And this is coming from somebody who's been had been dug into it for a couple of years. So uh, yeah, you you definitely um, you can tell you've done your homework uh, on all of this. Yeah, and when, when you got started, what, what were some of the initial mistakes you made? Well, so in the very beginning, understand that, you know, again, I, I wasn't real comfortable. I wasn't confident in myself starting a business. So, mm-hmm. uh, and, and I was the only one bringing in an income. Uh, with three boys, my wife uh, uh, volunteers all the time in, in school, and I want to keep that going. So all the pressure was on me, and I was scared to invest. So I was, you know, and actually I didn't even create a page right away. I was like, because, again, there's kind of a lack of confidence. It's like I, I saw – a page for an individual as being something that's for celebrities. So I didn't even do that for uh, several months, three or four months. And then um, even once I started doing that, I was spending the bare minimum on ads. So I was spending a dollar a day on, on Facebook ads. Now, at least I was doing something. But my point was I was so scared to spend any money back then because of all this, this pressure to make money. Yeah. That that I was just spending the bare minimum, and I, I wish I would have done more. But I mean, mo- most of my mistakes were less about Facebook and more about a business, right? So I wasn't spending enough just on Facebook ads, but just my brand in general. I didn't have a like I I was not a designer, and I tried to do all the design on my site, and it looked awful. 
And I mean, it, it was, it's it's funny to look back at now. Right? And I, I didn't even have at first. I didn't even have a premium theme. I did. I bought a free theme. I, my colors are, I can't. It's like some neon green. Some I can't even tell you. It was crazy. And I tried to create my own logo. Um, but little things like that. I didn't even have an email list for six months. So you know, I I, I understand. I completely understand um, businesses that, um, you know, are, are making mistakes in the early going. And I hope I can help them prevent them from making those mistakes, um, some of those same mistakes that I made. Yeah, and and, and that's definitely what you speak to, and uh, uh, every everything that I've I've you know that that's definitely the angle you take. Like this is what I've done, this is what I did wrong, and and this is what I'm doing now. And and I think that that's just a phenomenal way to kind of break it down to to layman, you know, education level in regards to Facebook, all the way up to experts as well. And what what have you done differently? You mentioned you had some design issues and um, you know wanting to invest yeah. more. If you could go back in time, what would have you what would have you changed from day one, like on day one? Yeah, I mean, and some of this is what I now apply whenever I try to create a, start a new project, right? So now I immediately create an email list and have some sort of opt in, even if there's not a legion like freebie, just a way to opt in. In fact, I didn't have that for six months. It's so ridiculous. Uh, but I, I, I would, you know, as soon as possible, create something that is of value in exchange for an email address to to escalate and and build that email list uh, more quickly. But absolutely, the investing. I mean, pay people who are trained to do things that you are not. Yeah. Um, especially anything to, 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 for for first impressions. Um, people come to your site for the first time. What does it look like? What kind of logo do you have? What kind of photography do you use? Um, it, you know, does it look professional? And if it doesn't, your content can be great, and it won't matter in some in a lot of cases. So a, a lot of investment, um, making sure you're using the right software. Again, not cutting corners and doing patchwork. I was doing all kinds of stuff there too. So I mean, I think that those are the biggest things. And when you when you started to trying to change your look, did you go through um, some tools, any specific tools that you used, or did you just get with some talented people to kind of help you with the the graphics looks? Because you could be a super smart on all this stuff, um, but you just don't have the design eye, and that's coming from right. somebody like me. I mean, I might like the super smart part, but I also don't have the design eye, and and I definitely need to go through people um, like that. But there's also some other some tools to help you out with uh, some look of, of Facebook pages like PageMoto and, and some other things like that. Did you use anything specifically, um, or was it more of a you just got with somebody who had more of a, a creative graphic design eye? Well, you know, I used um, a short stack, for example, and I still – actually, the short stack designer is the person who does all my design now. Okay. So, so it's we share that person because she's so awesome, and and I, you know, I, I was working closely with them. That she she's been designing all my stuff for like three years now. But even before that, though, before I was working with her and I was using say Short Stack, it's still you know templates, and so it's it's not it's not good enough when you're just using a, a design template. And and luckily, and the thing is, you can't really trust your friends and people close to you to, to be honest about how, how your your business looks and your site looks. Or your mother. So, yeah, or your mother. So John Robinson, uh, my business manager, luckily I had him, so basically what he did, and with, you know, unsolicited, he sent uh, my site, a link to my site out to somebody else that he trusted who does not know me and say, you know, be brutally honest, what are your thoughts? And he was brutally honest. It was, you know, it was awful. And he made all these suggestions of what I what I should do, and and that was really the start of me kind of you know the light bulb of like oh I've got to invest in a premium theme so I got to research you know and look into that I've got to get get a new logo and, and you know I kind of reached out at that point to some people I knew to 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 get a logo created so it wasn't you know, a service or anything like that mm-hmm. um, and oh and then uh, I've reached you know kind of look research locally to find out who who are the trusted photographers. I actually did an exchange of services at that point. Because again, I was broke and, and hemorrhaging money. And um I was like, you know, I need these professional photos done. I'll give you know, it I'll give you an exchange 
I don't know what I said for, for some Facebook services back then I undervalued myself, but it was a great trade for me because it was a huge upgrade in terms of, you know, th that was that, that like a uh, serious look photo that I was using for like three years before I had, <laughs> I had to uh, redo it. Uh, so, but that was a big, big upgrade from what I was using before that, where it's like, I cropped my head out of a family picture kind of thing. <laughs> so, you know, it's ridiculous. So, um, I mean, that, I, there, there weren't a lot of tools in that way, but, but you know, one place I started in terms of tools was um, uh, A Weber for my for my email list. And that eventually upgraded that to to Infusionsoft or Confusionsoft or whatever you want to call it, um, which I've been doing for a couple of years now. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, in terms of design, I just you know I, I use um, Genesis Framework first of all for my website, just as the the template, the theme. Okay. But but then you know I have some custom work done on it. Um, make sure the colors are consistent with with the logo, and and you know have my designer look at it to, to make sure everything's right. Too. Yeah, and I think you make some great points. Um, you know, you could be uh, the best in the world, but if if you don't appear professional, you didn't, it didn't appear that way, and if you're not using all the images sizes correctly and and just the full shebang, you're, you're just going to come across as somebody who isn't professional. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I think one point you kind of slipped in there that I think is something to point out that uh, we've done as well is do trade for services. Yeah. Uh, when we when we started to do that for like videos and, and different things like that, oh my God! I mean, when I saw what we could do with the video versus what somebody who was really good at it, our video views shot through the roof. And mm -hmm. uh, one one way to go about that, and if, for the listeners out there, is think what you can do on, on a trade for that sort of stuff. Don't don't go cheap on it, um, and you don't have to if you have something of value in return, and almost everybody does. So I think that's an awesome piece of advice. Um, you know, make sure everything yeah. looks good and do it right and do it, let the right people do it. Um, yeah, and, and it's scary, you know, spending, even back, because I remember, like, how valuable, how much $100 or $500 was to me at that point. Mm -hmm. But the flip side of that is the $500 or $1,000 or Five thousand dollars you could have been making if you if you had a better exactly. um, first impression. So exactly, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. It's not it's something I wasn't really thinking about when we were gonna talk today about some mistakes. But that that, that that's an awesome piece of advice that I, I think everybody really needs to heed and, and make sure that they follow. Um, and mo moving on here a little bit to uh, a little bit some of the more technical aspects, uh, targeting. Uh, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people. Uh, Facebook comes down to value, and, and now again, I'm going to let you, um, you know, either validate this or, or not. But yeah. I think some of the biggest things are uh, creating value and then getting that value offer to the right person, which comes down to targeting. Uh, so targeting is such a key thing. Can you talk about maybe some of the targeting mistakes that you made, or common uh, mistakes that are being made in, in regards to that area? Yeah, I mean, the the reason Facebook is so powerful is because you've got over 1.5 billion people using it actively, feeding in a ton of data, and they're there a lot. So they're easy to reach. They're, they're, they're there for you, for you to be reached. It's a matter of finding that person, that ideal audience. But one of the mistakes, I mean, there's several people mistakes people make with, with targeting. The first that they do is, like, I'm just going to target people based on interests. Um, and so, so it's, you know, let's it's, say it's, again, my Facebook marketing uh, business. And so I'm just going to target people who have interest in Social Media Examiner and Amy Porterfield and Mari Smith and you know, Facebook marketing, whatever, and sell my stuff to them. And then I run that for a while, spend a bunch of money, it fails, and I'm like, ah, Facebook ads don't work. I mean, that, that's that's the, the, biggest, the biggest mistake people make is they, number one, they only – they only target by interest, completely neglecting if they already have um, an audience, a built-in audience that they aren't targeting. So, for example, if they have a fan base, you should be targeting those people too to sell your stuff or anything. If you have an email list, you should be uploading that custom, as a custom audience and targeting those people. If you have website visitors, I sure hope you have website visitors, you should be using website custom audiences and targeting those people who visit your website. So all these people will know who you are and are more likely to act. So mm -hmm. that, that's the first, first of all, the biggest mistake is not targeting people who are actually close to you in the first place. The second is not understanding that um, these users are at various stages of the funnel. And mm -hmm. if all you do is try to sell something, don't expect to be successful. So mm -hmm. you could have – 
this large target audience of 100,000 people who could potentially buy from you. This probably 99.9% aren't going to buy today no matter how good your ad is, mm -hmm. and especially if they don't all know you. So the key is to send them kind of down this funnel. It's like, okay, well, first of all, a lot of people don't know, don't know you, so let's warm them up, up with some really helpful um, content that, that solves a problem for them. So, so create that blog post, send them to your site. Okay, they've been to your site, so now you're building up this website custom audience. We, we don't stop there, first of all. You, you should probably keep promoting these blog posts because some people will be ready to buy from you after one blog post. Some people will be 100. Some will never buy from you. The point is we want to continue to, to um, send that value to them too. Um, but then we also want an email list or, or build an email list. So, again, I wouldn't – be focused too much on targeting people who don't know you with an offer because an email address is valuable to us as, as marketers but also as users. Like I don't give my email address out to just anybody. I don't want to be spammed and all that stuff from people I don't know or care about. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of, okay, now that they trust you because you've been um, sending them to your site and they're reading your content and they love it, let's target those same people with an offer um, for a free offer in exchange for an email address. And those who will be much more likely than someone who doesn't know you. So, okay, now they're in that stage. And then when you are ready to sell, you're selling to those groups. You're selling to people who have been to your website, people who like your page, people who have opted in for something. And at that point, you're much more likely to sell. And then you could break it down even more that you, you've got a product, you introduce it, you send it to your landing page. I've seen so often that that first time they don't buy. But if I have a remarketing pixel on anyone who's landed on that landing page but didn't buy, mm -hmm. those, it's just a matter of remi reminding them or giving them another, another angle, another reason to, that this is a, a good product. That's that's where it's most successful. And that falls into the website. One of your website custom audiences, correct? People who come correct. back in in our view. And I know what you just said. Just knowing my progression of learning here, the big part of all those custom audiences. I mean, that was a lot to swallow. And, it's, and uh, you're, you're speaking right on point with some of the listeners, and then for other people are like, what is he talking about? And let me, let me just tell everybody out there, you can go to johnloomer.com, and he, I, I, he, he writes about all this stuff in detail and shows you how to, how to um, go over everything. And right now, that just so everyone uh, knows how to spell his name, is J-O-N-L-O-O-M-E-R, johnloomer.com, because there is probably eight to ten, if not more, of these website custom audiences, audiences that you can build or you can target directly and not just push that boost button. And, and on that yes. note, John, can you talk about the boost button and is it any, is it a value at all? Is, should people <laughs> ever do it? I mean, what, why do they even have that there? Is that for people who don't want to dig into it and do it the right way or, or is it something that still works? Well, I mean, it's basically Facebook's easy button and yeah, I like to describe it as the gateway drug to, to the good stuff. Because <laughs> uh, basically, you know, they've got a ton of, of marketers, uh, people who have pages, um, and they're they're trying to make it. But, but a lot of people who have never advertised before, and they want it. And it's complicated. It really could be complicated. So they want to make it as easy as possible. So how do they do that? They, they provide the easy button. And um, they try to automate as much as they can for you. Now, mm -hmm. obviously, now that I'm not saying that can't work at all. Like I, I've heard of some because because Facebook's targeting is so good that like when they automate this stuff, um, it, it can be pretty decent. But this is still top of the funnel stuff. So mm -hmm. if you want to get more engagement for something, and you don't have a, a you know some of these built-in audiences where you have a, you know, all this website traffic already or whatnot. Um, this tends to be good for engagement, where Facebook's going to show it to people who are likely to engage. But if you're trying to, you know, promote something to build your email list or to sell something and you just hit the boost button, don't expect that to be all that effective. Yeah. Um, so so I, I just see, like, you know, feel free to use it as, like, your first time experimenting with Facebook ads, but don't lean on it forever, please. Yeah, and, and um, if I'm not mistaken, a lot of these website custom audiences that you need to go through Power Editor to build them. Is that correct, or is there other ways? No, you don't have to. You can go through the Ads Manager um, as well um, within Facebook. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad we, you, you keep bringing up website custom audiences because, really, this should be your priority is building up that audience. So mm -hmm. 
that that's that's why it's so important to create this create a blog with helpful content that's not all about your product that just answers people's questions. So when you when you share this content and sending them to your site, this is warming them up. It is gaining their they're starting to gain trust and feel like you're you're someone who who knows what you're talking about. Um, and they're, they're, they're gain that respect and sort of recognize um, what your brand is and what, what it's all about. So then when you sell, you are selling to people who visited your site. So you, you need to be focused on building that audience because that is the audience that's going to ultimately buy from Absolutely. I mean, it really makes perfect sense. If you, if you kind of slow down and just think about it, well, yeah, you want to spend your money on the people who have some sort of interest in you. How high that is, it's hard to tell. But, uh, you know, you might as well start there versus just the masses and people who have no clue who you are. So that, yeah. that's, um, that, that's something that we've learned, and, and I'm glad we, we've t- kind of dug into that because that is just so vitally important it's just to, to make your dollars go way further and more successful as well. Yeah, absolutely. And honestly, I, don't, I, I only target my website visitors now because my, my website traffic is at a point now where I don't need to go beyond that. So it's a really valuable group of people. Well, yeah, yeah that, that, I think that would be the best place to start. And then, again, everyone, there, there are different layers and layers of this, and, and you can learn a lot from John if you start following him. Um, kind of move on to the next question here. What, um, what are some general frustrations that are overblown? Or maybe one way to ask this is, do people concentrate on the wrong things? And if and if uh, they do, what what are some of those wrong things? Well, I mean, the first one is the the biggest overblown um, complaint is or Facebook changing the algorithm and organic reach and all that kind of stuff. Is the perception from some that Facebook is trying to screw marketers and force them to pay um, kind of at the expense of the quality of the news feed and. It, it, so first of all, it's a matter of understanding how Facebook works and how the news feed works. And um, there is an algorithm, yes. And guess what? It works. And if it wasn't working, so, so, so in order to test what is it working, Facebook, the way the algorithm, algorithm works is Facebook is attempting to show content to people that they are most likely to care about instead of just being a – a, a fire hose feed, which clearly doesn't work that well, because Twitter is not growing anymore, does not grow at anywhere close to the rate that Facebook is. And so Facebook continues to grow more than 10 years later, because wow. fa- and Facebook continues to um, tweak the algorithm to make sure they have all this intelligence to determine what people want to see and what they don't. Sometimes they make mistakes. Sometimes it's not perfect. But the, the key is – they are active on Facebook. They remain more active on Facebook than anywhere else, and they continue to grow. So that's the test. Now, you accept that. You accept that Facebook is strong, because otherwise, if, if, for example, Facebook were screwing brands and, and, and not showing their content intentionally, even though it was good content that users wanted to see, that would be at the expense of the user experience. Users would be upset. Users would use Facebook less often. And this would be bad for everybody. Mm-hmm. So ultimately what's most important to the advertiser and to the brand is that users have great experience because the more that they are on Facebook, the more data that is collected on them, the more people that you can reach uh, through ads and organically because they're on Facebook. But the minute they start flying away because they don't like the content anymore, you can't reach them regardless. It's a so great point. I, I think – Yes, I think that's the, the biggest thing, just understanding your role. I mean, there's so many things that are going to impact it. Look, we are brands. We are boring in general. So <laughs> we can't really expect people to to re- want to see our content at a high, high, high rate. Now, some brands do a great job, right, and they have great organic reach because they're able to make it interesting. But mm-hmm. also keep in mind that's why the targeting is so important. If you target the wrong group to, to build a fan base, you, and then you, you create content, even good content, that they don't want to see. You can't complain. It's your fault you built a bad fan base to start with. Yeah. So, so I guess one of those mistakes, yes, uh, is, is with that targeting, you're building a bad fan base, and, and they don't respond to, uh, to your content. Um, 
So, so yeah, I think the organic reach is a big one that I could talk all day about. Uh, just It's not something that bothers me. And if you chase an algorithm, you're going to be frustrated. If you're constantly like, oh, now now link shares are, are, are get more reach, so I've got to create more link shares. Oh, it used to be photo shares, so I've got, I've got to create more photos. Like, no, that, that's not the point. And that's actually one reason Facebook tweaks this so often is because every time they make a change, brands ruin it, and then they try to manipulate it, right? Because yeah. for the longest time, it was like, oh, text updates got the most reach. So what happened? Did, did, did you see then users all of a sudden feel like they had to make all these text updates? No, uh-huh. they didn't. They just continued to create posts the way they normally do. Brands, though, would try to share links within text updates, and they're ugly and stupid. And we ruined it, so now text updates were no longer preferable because no, no one wanted to respond to those. Uh-huh. Um so if you chase an algorithm, you'll constantly be frustrated. If you just focus on creating really good content that your audience will want to engage with, you don't, you're not frustrated. It's okay. Like none of these, none of these tweaks to the algorithm really matter that much. It's, it's like, oh, good. I'm glad they did that. That, that's, yeah. that's like, like the latest algorithm change was, uh, they're going to reward, you know, basically they're going to be watching if people spend more time on a particular piece of content than others that it could mean that they that they enjoy it, even if they don't like, comment, or share. So things like that, it's like, oh, yeah, well, that makes sense. So, I, I mean, that's a, yeah, the organic reach is a big one, but then it's just like, so you talk about reach being a metric that I think is overblown, I don't really care about. I care most of that I'm reaching the right people, whether it's 500 or 50,000, as long as it's the right people. Like, I could have reached 50,000, but none of them really cared about my stuff. Or I reach yeah. 500, and they're all, like, you know, big-time fans who all, you know, go to my site and buy stuff. So that's yeah. important. And to kind of um, make sure I'm understanding and, and kind of recap, I mean, it is true that the organic reach, you know, in the past, you know, you had 5,000 fans, you'd put a post, everybody would see it. And it is true that that went down to the 5 to 8% or whatever, something like that. Now, that is true, but what you're saying is that – that doesn't – what's not true is that that makes Facebook not a viable platform. And, I, and uh, is that kind of what – because I remember thinking a couple years ago or a few years ago when that happened, people are, well, then what's the point of being on Facebook? What's the point of getting fans? And what you're saying is, whoa, 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 whoa. yes, that's true. But no, it's still important to do all those things because you can target to those people. And if you're getting the right fans, it's still an amazing, valuable uh, advertising medium. And when we say advertising, we mean distributing content and then slipping in a marketing message every now and then. Um, is, am I following you correctly on what we're saying as far as like a general frustration that gets overblown? To, to a point. Now, understand, reach was never 100%. Okay. Uh, people try to act like all of a sudden one day we weren't reaching 100%. The expectation that we ever reach 100% of our fans of the post is ridiculous. Yeah. That 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 assumes that 100% of your fans are online at that point. Do, mm-hmm. What percentage of our followers are we reaching with a twi- tweet on Twitter? It's like mm-hmm. less than 1%, and there's no oh. filtering going on there. Mm-hmm. So so no, you are never reaching 100% of your fans. It's just the filtering has changed. Gotcha. Um. So, so so that's the first thing. But something else, the, 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 there's, there's been that algorithm, but there's also more competition in the new season than there's ever been before. Um, brands are there more than ever, so that, that influences things. Brands are creating more content than ever before, so that, that impacts it. But here's a big one that not enough people think about. My page has been around for three and a half years. When someone liked my page three and a half years ago, they had an, an, an interest in my content. Do they still care about Facebook ads? And that doesn't mean they unlike my page, they stop caring about Facebook ads. But especially for these these pages that have been around for a while, this type of phenomenon is something we don't give enough attention to that you have stale fans. That they if if you built a big big portion of your fan base two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, you can't expect to reach many of those people because many of them probably just don't care anymore. Mhm. Mhm. I hear you. I hear you. Um, so, so anyway, yeah. But you're right, though. I mean, five to eight percent. That's still five to eight. That's still people who can't. Like the, the Facebook, if the algorithm is correct and that they're doing it appropriately, they're showing it to the five to eight percent of people who care the most. And you know, yeah. this includes obviously that to be online around that time as well. Um, so as long as they're sharing, showing it to the right people, 
That's all I care about. Now, I don't mean to boast, but I'm still seeing 20, 25, 30%. Oh, really? And I, I think a lot of people still are, too. And it also and, depends on – and a lot of these metrics that come out are, are more focused around these brands that are huge and, and a lot of these same issues we talk about, too. But they have, like, a million, two million, five million um, uh, fans. And, first of all, they've been around for a long time. And the second, second thing is you get a lot of casual fans, like, oh, yeah, I like that. I don't want to hear from them, but, yeah, I like Nike, whatever it is. Yeah. So, you know, so they, they, don't, they don't care if they see this stuff in the news. Now, I'm not denying that this that there are people who have big organic reach problems. I'm just saying there are a lot of factors that contribute to it. Part of it's the, the age of, of that audience. Part is, you know, how you built that audience in the first place. And we've got to acknowledge mistakes. We all make them when we do it. If, if we're trying focusing just on the cheapest like, um, sometimes it's not going to be quality. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so all these things contribute, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, the main thing is, are you reaching the right people actually going to engage with it in the first place? Now, if you're reaching 5% of people and they're not really engaging with your stuff, you might want to start from scratch because um, it <laughs> sounds like you, you didn't build a very good audience. Gotcha. That makes sense. Uh, let's move on to budgeting mistakes. Um, I, I know you mentioned earlier in the, uh, in the podcast here that, you didn't spend enough, but yeah. what, what are, I mean, I guess we, you can speak to that more if you'd like, um, or any other type of, you know, money matters that, that people aren't, aren't spending the correct way or, yeah. cause I know you can start to spend a lot at the beginning or a little at the beginning. Can you talk a little bit about some mistakes people make there? I think one of the biggest mistakes, uh, people make is kind of the opposite of what I did. So they don't know what they're doing and they're spending hundreds or thousands of dollars a day before they know what they're doing. And so they don't even really know how to measure success. And they're running all this money and like, oh, it didn't work. It's not working or whatever. And, I mean, my, my approach and what I recommend is that you spend, I'm not saying a dollar a day like I did, but you're spending a, a lower amount to figure in and, and, and testing out what works and what doesn't work, kind of getting, getting your sense. Of um, of what you're doing, once you figure out what works, then escalating, um, escalating those things that are working and stopping those things that aren't. So, mm-hmm. man, I think that's one of the first big mistakes that I see advertisers make. Um, another is having a budget that is inconsistent with the audience size. So, like I hear often, like I I can't spend my budget, or this is really like this. I'm getting really high CPM, or or whatever it is. It's because, and like they'll, they'll, they might be using website customizers. Like, yeah, you have this really relevant audience, these 5,000 people, and they're trying to spend $500 a day targeting those 5,000 people. And so one of two things will happen in that case. First of all, you're not going to spend your entire budget. And the, the second would be Facebook will try to, and as a result, uh, just be pounding those people. And in order to pound those people, you're, the, the, that means they have to outbid everybody to reach those people. So your CPM, the cost to reach them, is going to go sky high, which is going to make your your advertising basically worthless because it's just going to be too expensive to reach them. So I mean, those are those are two big mistakes. I mean, wow, there, there's so many issues with bidding and um, and budgeting in general, uh, but those are two two main ones. What about the auto uh, fu- bid function uh, yeah. that Facebook offers? Do you, you know, personally here internally, we're actually it just came up yesterday uh, that we were talking about this, and and because uh, we're trying to, you got to gauge, you know, just like everybody else, and especially with the small business, sometimes there's a one or two person shop that are trying to do all this stuff, and it's hard to yeah. monitor. Okay, now I'm spending this. Okay, now slow down the bidding. Okay, speed up the bidding. All that stuff. So we're trying to get the most bang for our buck. Through through time spent, you know our our staff's time. There's value and money in that, so yeah. we're we're trying to figure that out. Can you speak a little bit about the um, auto bid feature, or and and if that's yeah. something that people can trust? Yeah. So w- by default, let's say you're you're running um, an ad set for uh, with the objective of uh, clicks to website. So in that case, by default, Facebook will optimize 
for website clicks. So they'll show it to people most likely to click your link, and they'll also bid, there'll be an automated bid, also bid whatever is necessary to reach those people. Um, and in general, that actually is the best way to go. Because first of all, Facebook's optimizing, and they're going to uh, spend whatever's necessary to reach these optimal people who are, uh, so of the, let's say, 100,000 people that you're targeting, they're going to focus on those 10,000 or so people who are most likely to click your link. Mm -hmm. so, so, so that's, first of all, a good thing. Uh, but, again, one of the pitfalls of the auto bidding is, is if, for that same example I just gave, is if your bid is too high for the audience, that cost to reach them could go really high. So you have to be aware of that, uh, first of all. No. Is there a way to be aware of that before you click on that auto? I mean, does it tell you, hey, this is about what it's <laughs> going to cost? No. Um, <laughs> Not that one. And, huh? and, and really, I mean, you just have to be conscious of it and have a threshold for what you what you tend to expect and monitor it, right? So I have, I, I typically, I consider an average CPM, especially when you're optimizing, to be about $5. Now, it can be more. Um, depending on the audience you're targeting, but especially if you have multiple ad sets going, and you know you're, and and, and you have one that's just way above everything else, it kind of give you a tip that you too. I mean, I, I think with that five dollar um, kind of rule of thumb, then then we're looking at especially if you're optimizing, um, it's got an audience of about let's we'll, we'll say fifty thousand people spending five uh, five to ten dollars a day. And having a CPM in that five five to ten thousand area is kind of what, or five to ten dollars area is what about what you can expect. Um, now, typically though, optimizing is either best for bigger audiences, or again lower budgets with these medium sized um, budgets. So, but means uh, John, I, I think mm -hmm. it cut out a little bit. Can you repeat that last uh, sentence? So, so typically, um, when you're optimizing, it tends to be best either for bigger audiences, so say for Facebook to pick out the people most likely to perform a desired action, mm -hmm. or um, lower budgets with these medium-sized audiences. Um, on the flip side, let's say, like with these website custom audiences, you have an audience of 500 people who visit the specifics page of your site. In that case, it makes no sense to optimize for a couple of reasons. First of all, if Facebook optimizes, of those 500 people, they're going to focus on, I don't know, 50 or 100 or whatever. And in reality, all of those people are, are, are equally likely to act, or at least they should be. Let's say they visited a landing page but they didn't buy. So we want to reach all of them. So you don't want to optimize in that case. You'll want to use either CPM which is just the, where you're optimizing, the technically optimizing for impressions. It's not for an action, but they're going to show it to everybody. The CPM bidding is they'll show it to everybody as many times as they can within your budget. Um, or daily unique reach, which is showing to everybody as many people within your audience as possible, but no more than once per day. So I would use those types of manual bidding when you have an extremely relevant and small audience. And you want to make sure you hit everybody. Because, honestly, if you got an audience of 50,000, you usually don't want to hit everybody in that case. 50,000 or more, really. I mean, you want – because really, but the thing is, when it comes to, like, targeting um, my website visitors to – so we're talking about not – we're talking about a few hundred thousand people here. I'm not just talking to a single page to promote a product or an, another blog post. I do have Facebook optimized in that case. It's more when it's – the, really the smaller, the smallest of audiences. Um, gotcha. And then, you know, the, the other manual bidding is the CPC. But really, CPC, you're just bidding for um, engagement in that case. And, and people need to understand that. I think so many people come from the Google world doing CPC, thinking that's the way you should do it, and thinking cost per click means cost per website click, but it doesn't. It means cost per any click on, on uh, your ad. And you're just optimizing for engagement in that case. Gotcha. So to kind of recap, your expert advice would be for people getting into it because this was a – we just – our heads were spinning like, which one do we do on this? Yeah. So we're saying like clicks to website 
is is the best uh, action to to bid for when it's a bigger audience. Uh, I guess we could call it less relevant than than a highly relevant audience like a website visitor. So for your uh, smaller audiences that are that are a little bit uh, or a lot more highly relevant audiences, you would go more with the CPM. And then for bigger audiences that could possibly be less relevant, you might as well go with the clicks to website. Am I following you correctly on that? Be clear, clicks to website is just one of the ways Facebook can optimize. There are uh, close to, I don't know, 10 or so objectives that you can have Facebook optimize for to so basically auto bid uh, based on, you know, showing it to people most likely perform that action. So mm -hmm. clicks to the website, that's one example. Now, so in other words, if you have a large audience where it's not that refined and you want Facebook to focus on the person most likely to perform that desired action, having using the auto bid is, is going to be your, your best bet. Now, okay. if you've got a really, really small, refined audience, and the example I gave before is where the, the audience of people who have visited a, a landing page for a product but did not buy, these people should all be equally likely to purchase, and you also don't want Facebook to optimize because you want to hit everybody instead of just picking and choosing, so that's when you should use CPM or daily unique reach. All right, I hope everyone uh, go back and listen to this part because I can't tell you how important that is. And when you get to this level of understanding all of this, th those are the details that are going to really kind of separate what you were doing to take in the next step. So I'm going to encourage everybody to go back for the last minute and re-listen to that because that, that's some gold right there, and I, I can't emphasize that enough. So thank, thanks for explaining all that, John. Um, all right. Uh, I guess it's just good to one of our um, – Last question here. Uh, what are uh, some uh, mistakes make when building their audience? We've talked a little bit about that, but do people mess up in any way? Are they building like a wrong audience on accident when they think they're building a correct um, audience? Yeah. Uh, I don't no. know if I'm uh, asking uh, that. No, right yeah, yeah. no, absolutely. So I, I think, you know, the approach that most brands take is I've got to build my fan base. It's usually a fan base we're talking about when it's an audience, but it could be website customized, could be anything, as quickly as possible, as cheaply as possible. And part of it's because of that vanity number. And or they think that all fans, for example, are created equal. And then if you've got a hundred thousand instead of one thousand, then that just that'll just, you know, be a hundred times as many sales and everything else. But the truth is that it all the quality of those people. So if your focus is, for example, on running contests and, um, you know, become a fan to, in exchange, you know, because you know, we run all these contests and get free stuff, or building your email list um, through contests, the people you're attracting then are the people who want free stuff. Mm. So when you're ready to sell to them, don't expect them to buy. From you. They just want that free stuff. Uh, but the other thing is, is it even a relevant free product in the first place? If, if it's completely irrelevant, forget about it. Giving away iPads, all they wanted was that iPad. Yeah. But additionally, um, I think we can get too obsessed with, you know, when we run these ads, what is the cost per page like um, or cost per website click or whatever it is? Because the main thing is, is whether we're attracting the right person in the first place. It's the same thing is like when, when you're building an email list and it's about a contest. You know, it, it, did it cost a dollar to build that, you know, for each email address? Did it cost 30 cents? You know, it doesn't mean necessarily 30 cents is better than a dollar because it depends on the quality of that person. So, for example, the country you target huge, makes a huge impact on the cost just to reach them. So if you're building your fans with uh, just, just by targeting India, you're going to build a really, really cheap audience really, really quickly. Um, and I'm not going to say that there aren't customers in India because I do have some customers in India, but you have to be aware of the potential for click farms and stuff like that too. It's like where is your where is your core audience? Are they in India? If they are, you know, go for it. But otherwise, don't focus just on that cost because um, otherwise you're going to be building an audience that ultimately may not be responsive to you, may not buy from you, may not click that link down the road. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, John, I 
have learned a lot from you just from right now. <laughs> I've been taking my notes and knowing where 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 I want to go back to and re-listen to, and and, and I. I know our audience uh, as well has learned a ton for, from you, and, and I definitely thank you for you, for your time. and And I want to let people know how to follow you to learn more, because a lot of the stuff that I um, we've talked about today, I, I've seen really long, extensive blog posts where you dig into these details. Um, so I want to let people know how to follow you for free. And then I, I also understand that you have a Power Hitters Club, an advanced training class. Uh, and just want to let everybody know how, how to sign up for those. So if you can let uh, our listeners know, that'd be great. Sure. Yeah, so just go to johnlimmer.com. That's where you're going to find my regular blog posts on pretty much anything you need. But uh, also for, for the more advanced Facebook marketer, uh, someone who spends, you know, probably a couple thousand dollars or more per month, or if you want to be a Facebook marketer, the Power Hitters Club was made for you. So if you go to johnlimmer.com slash PHC, uh, this includes weekly webinars just for that group so that catches everybody up on what's going on in Facebook advertising right now. And this Q&A session as well. We've got a private community in there, which is awesome. It's, it's not just that I'm in there answering questions, which I am, but so many other advanced Facebook marketers, too, that can share their experiences and can help you. Um, I've also got weekly blog posts only for that group and huge discounts because I'm, I'm running um, uh, workshops, so these 90-minute to two-hour live webinars every two months. And members get them for twenty dollars, while non-members pay one forty cents. So it's okay. a huge benefit to it. So that's again johnlumer.com slash phc. Okay, and that's j o n l o o m e r dot com. And for the Power Hitters Club, it's that with the backslash uh, phc. That's All right. right. Well, John, hey, I appreciate your time, and uh, you know I look forward to uh, continuing to learn from you. And um, you have yourself an awesome rest of your week. All right. Thanks so much, Dave. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.